All right, so y'all may have just gotten a notification. We do plan on recording um, this Zoom so that we can share it with our um, Facebook group after the event for those that couldn't join us um, and also um, just through the Alumni Association in general. So we'll probably be on both. Um, but welcome uh, to our second event in the Saluki's Elevate series. Um, I'm Christina Pisoni. I am the chair of the um, SIU Young Alumni Committee. And um, our group was formed um, a little over a year ago now um, to promote um, and en enhance and promote diverse engagement opportunities for our 35 and under um, alumni base. That's kind of the, the age range that we target. With that being said, we um, are broad reaching and, and do um, welcome those who don't maybe fit that um, age band and we are welcome to all alums. Um, so welcome, we're happy to have you. Uh, we are excited about this event specifically. It's the second one in our um, Saluki's Elevate series. Um, what we will do tonight um, is have each of our speakers present for about 10 minutes. Um, and then we will break out into Q&A sessions. So I would ask you all, if you do have questions that come up throughout the, the event while the speakers um, are presenting. We actually have someone whose name has changed to ask questions here. So you can chat directly um, to that individual. Um, so if you click the chat button at the bottom of your screen and then um, the chat box pops up on the right hand side and you can change who you're chatting to and you can change that to ask questions here and you will chat directly to them. And then um, it's actually Bethany is her name. So Bethany slash ask questions here. We'll then, um, at the end of the three presentations, proceed to ask those questions to the individuals. The plan is to have some extra time to then have um, our guests um, hop on and they can have more of an interactive Q&A. So at that point, you can hop on video or just audio, whatever you want to do, um, and interact directly um, with our panelists here. So. That's kind of the general housekeeping um, that I have, and we will get rolling. So our first presenter is Eric Alvarez, and I apologize for looking away from the screen because I'm going to read his bio, which is on my um, other screen over here. So Eric is um, the CEO and founder of Grapefruit Health, a company that is creating a brand new workforce to help meet the significant shortage of healthcare workers today. Prior to the adventure that he's on now, he has held multiple positions within the healthcare industry. Most recently, Eric was the COO of a healthcare technology startup called Fibroblast, which was acquired by the EMR giant, oh, I'm going to screw it up, Cerner or Kerner, sorry, Eric, uh, Corporation in 2020. I'm getting two thumbs up. In this role, he oversaw product development, human resources, finance, general company operations, and was active in all major sales cycles. Essentially, he oversaw all that is what it sounds like. Um, so he obviously has the experience in startups more than once. Um, so we're excited to have him. Before joining Fibroblast, Eric was a hospital administrator at the University of Chicago Medicine and Northwest Medicine. In these roles, he led large clinical and non-clinical teams, mostly in specialty services that included the, included the service lines of cardiovascular surgery, urology, and ophthalmology. These roles have provided Eric with a deep understanding of how health systems function as a business and what their systemic challenges are. He earned his master's degree in healthcare admin from Rush University, a top five program, and his bachelor's in aviation management from the one and only Southern Illinois University, a top 10 program. Prior to that, he served in the United States Air Force during Iraqi freedom. Thank you for your service. Um, and I just lost my spot. Most recently, Eric was named a top 100 rising Latinx founders and distinguished alum of the year from his master's program here at SIU. So without further ado, I'm getting off the screen and passing it off to Eric. And we are all excited to hear him speak. So Eric Alvarez. Awesome. And, and just a, a quick question before we kick off. Is this the, is this kind of the whole group I see on the, on the, uh, the 14 folks here that are listening, or is there like a larger group because I, I asked that to say like we could keep it really you know more intimate and, and or not so yeah solid question um this is very much Brady Bunch style this is the crew as they um as we have more people filter in they'll pop up on your screen but this is what oh. we've got so far 
Awesome. So yeah, so I'll keep it casual and like, yeah, feel free to, you know, uh, semi-interrupt and ask questions along the way. But the, the, the format and the style that us panelists decided to kind of talk on today was um, to kind of, you know, tell our stories and hopefully that they resonate with you a little bit. And then you can kind of Q&A with me a little and on uh, experiences you may or may not have had. But calling from the office today, wild day, um, a lot of exciting news as a company. And so um, sorry for being a little uh, 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 dis disoriented or jangled on this. But Eric Alvarez, pleasure to meet everybody. Uh, I joined the military again in 2003, right out of high school. Didn't really have a college path, to be honest. College was never really in my um, my purview. I was never, I never had, you know, the family of everybody that went to college and that was what I was going to do. So for me, I was like, uh, growing up, I was working on cars a lot uh, outside of Chicago. And my old man uh, who painted houses growing up, that was his profession. We, I wanted to, um, uh, you know, go into the trades myself. And my dad had heard from one of his colleagues that his son was fixing planes and that he was making great money. So I wanted to be an aircraft mechanic. And I was like, wow, what a better way to do it. I'm like, I don't think I can go to college for that. I'm not ready for, to do something like that. What, where else can I learn how to fix jets? Where else can I fix, learn how to fix planes? And so I joined the Air Force, right? Because they needed people at the time. This was in 2003, a couple of years after 9-11 and uh, got into the military. And my recruiter, you know, as recruiters do, uh, was, you know, letting me know, like if I worked on the C-5 aircraft, which is the largest cargo airplane in the U.S. military fleet, if I were to work on that, then I would be on my way to become an aircraft mechanic. So I joined the Air Force then, and spent two years, uh, you know, over uh, just working about 18 hours a day, just, you know, fixing jets um, in the military. And so it was during that time that I was like, ouch, this is really hard. I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. Like, there's no way this is really, really hard. And obviously military money, if, for those that don't know, if you join the military as like a, a, an enlisted person, as a very junior person, you're making like 300 at the time, this was back then, but it was like about $350 every two weeks, right? So not a lot of money. Um, and so when I got out of the military, I was like, I don't think I want to do this. Illinois specifically has the Illinois Veterans Grant. And what that allows you to do is to uh, go to any Illinois public college, uh, basically tuition free. And I specifically chose SIU because of the uh, how prestigious the aviation group was there. So I was like, I have some aviation experience. I want to learn the, the management side of aviation. I flown a little bit in the military, not because of the military, but like they had these clubs, they called um, Piper clubs or aero clubs at air force bases where you can go and fly at a big discount because you're in the military and get your pilot's license. So I had about 20 hours. I knew I didn't want to be a pilot. Uh, I had aviation experience, but not management experience. And so I was like, okay, I think I want to study aviation management. So SIU gave me that awesome opportunity. I had a ton of military credits already, uh, college credits, played rugby while I was there, got my minor in speech communication, had an awesome experience, and also uh, studied abroad while I was there because I was so far ahead in my uh, credits that I was like, let's take advantage of this, of, uh, of this Illinois Veterans Grant. So did all that, studied abroad in Australia for seven months, uh, had a great time, met a lot of great people and learned a lot. And so it was a, around when I was graduating, I was graduating in 2008, economic crisis was hard to find a job in aviation management. So me and my college roommate, we lived at 309 West Cherry, by the way. So anybody that lives over there um, and one of my rugby friends, we decided to ride our bicycles across the country uh, to kill some time because the, the economy wasn't uh, favorable. So we rode our bikes from uh, Virginia Beach to all the way to San Diego. It was an awesome experience for us to do a lot of thought work. And on that bicycle trip, I was like, wow, we were doing it for a charity. And I was like, I love the idea of helping people. And, you know, biking every day is really easy when you're helping other people, you know, kind of do things. And so I was like, how can I do that? And I, I had a friend in, that was studying uh, healthcare administration at the master's level. And I was like, gosh, that sounds really interesting. Um, I moved in with a, uh, my girlfriend at the time uh, in Decatur, Illinois. So I'm from Chicago, but um, she... I knew her through high school. She got into the Millikan program there and nursing. So I was learning about a lot about healthcare from her and I was managing a family video, uh, believe it or not, uh, at the time. This was again, 2008. Uh, so I finished my bike trip. I'm managing a family video and I applied to the best healthcare administration program in the entire Midwest. 
only one program. Again, I would never recommend that and got crazy lucky and got into Rush. Rush is a top five healthcare administration program. And the reason I got in, short, long story short, I think the reason why I got in was because I had this like kind of unique story about the military and this bike ride and this like this whole dialogue. And so recommendation number one to the, everyone that's listening is like, really think about your narrative. So it's fine to go and get all these experiences under your belt and blah, blah, blah. If you don't know how to talk about them, if you don't know how to like, you know, market them or productize them, they're not worth a lot, right? And so thinking about everything you're doing today in your educational experience and internships and other jobs, thinking about those and, and then telling a really interesting narrative around them makes them so much stronger, right? And so I got into this incredible program. I was by far the roughest, you know, around the edges person that got into this program, right? I think I might, I was definitely the first SIU grad to get into this program. Um, and, um, uh, you know, anyways, my, a lot of these colleagues were coming from like Cornell and all these like very, very, you know, Ivy league type schools. And so through that process, I really learned a lot about professionalism. I learned a ton about healthcare administration. I learned how to like hospitals work, did a lot of great internship type work, uh, got hired uh, before I even graduated by the university of Chicago medical center, started leading large teams. And so all of a sudden I transformed from this, like you know, rough, roughish rugby guy, military guy to this, uh, at least I knew how to act, right? That's another uh, uh, line of dialogue I would love to take, but learn, learn how to act professional and uh, take on all these different roles. And so it was through all that, did a lot of hospital administration at University of Chicago Northwestern, led large teams of over 100 FTEs, um, earned really good compensation along the way, which I think is important for our alumni group, definitely well into the six figures, um, got, you know, and, and then from there really always wanted to be an entrepreneur. And I think that's what we were kind of talking about today. It's like, I was always jonesing to do that. I started my own bicycle event company. Obviously I was passionate about it for my bicycle ride around across the country and had an opportunity to create my own bicycle event company, which I was like, I don't know how this is going to scale. I had a smartphone application company that kind of, uh, started and failed. And, um, you know, those were both really good experiences, but not not like what I'm doing today. And so they helped me along the way and I burned and failed, but I did get a, to join a startup along the way after a hospital administration in a company called Fibroblast. I was the first employee, chief operating officer of this company. And we grew it into a, a much bigger company uh, over five years. And this was in about 2015. And we got acquired by the second largest electronic medical record company. We got really lucky. And, and it was um, a very exciting moment for all of us. It was very lucrative for me personally. And so I was like, wow, okay, so what have I done now at this point? I've, I've you know, had this really, this great journey at, at, at SIU that I got after the military and they kind of took me in, right, into the family. And I, I went from this like really directionalist kid, blah, blah, blah. And then SIU is really what I look at back and in, in, I'm 37 now. I was 22 at the time, 21, 22 at the time. And SIU, the structure of SIU is really what like, the military obviously helped sh shake out the bad kid part, but SIU is really what was like, Eric, go to class, do these things, and you're going to be successful. And I was like, oh, this is like a great framework for me. And I've taken that to the rest of my career. And so I go and I do all these great, you know, jobs and I mature in my profession. And now all of a sudden the company exits and I have, you know, I got paid out a good amount of money. And I'm like, what am I going to do the rest with the rest of my career now. And it wasn't retirement money by any stretch, but it was like, I really had an opportunity to pause and say, what do I want to do? And I did some consulting. I did some cloud transformation consulting, and it was also very lucrative and those were great things. But then I wound up starting Grapefruit Health. And that's what I'll spend the last few minutes here uh, talking about. And at Grapefruit Health, two minute warning I'm getting. So, uh, but for me, it's, it's at Grapefruit Health, what we're doing is we're addressing the massive staffing shortage in healthcare today. We're short by 3.2 million healthcare workers. And you see solutions out there that are like recruiters and travel nurses and platforms out there today. What we're doing is we're creating the, work, the first and only workforce in the world that's composed only of and completely of clinical students. So anybody pursuing a medical assistant to a medical doctorate uh, degree, we work primarily with nursing, social work, and pharmacy students. We recruit, train, and manage them onto our technology platform. And then they perform work on behalf of healthcare organizations uh, and we only charge $5 per interaction. We take a couple dollars of that. And so 
We're about a year in. We've raised $650,000 in capital. We're raising uh, quite a bit more. Um, and so we should be at a little bit over a million by the end of the year. And um, we have a few, our first few clients here in Chicago. And so anyways, I'll end it at that. Please find me on LinkedIn. Eric Alvarez uh, shouldn't be too hard. Uh, otherwise, that's eric at grapefruit.health. Um, and I would love to interact with each and every one of you. Again, I know it's a small crowd, but um, just happy to talk with all of you. So yeah, thanks for the time. Awesome. Thanks, Eric. And I had um, given everyone a warning that we were going to have them chat questions directly to Bethany, who is asked questions here, and then we'll hit them all at the end. Um, and then also give folks the opportunity to hop on and ask um, in the video. I was going to um, chat out. It was Eric at grapefruit.health. Yes, got it. I'm going to send that's it to correct. everyone yeah, so they can have it. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Appreciate it, Eric. Thanks for hopping on. I am interested to see the questions that we have for you at the end of it. So appreciate that. Uh, next gentleman we're going to have hop on here is Charles Alexander. Charles was born and raised on the south side of Chicago by his grandmother and his uh, and later his uncle. Charles attended college at SIU. Um, while attending SIU, he earned both his bachelor's and master's degree in speech communication with an emphasis in intercultural and interpersonal communication. Charles has over 12 years of experience in the interpersonal communication field. During um, his tenure at St. Xavier University, he served as a communications professor. Uh, starting in 2020, he became the co-founder of the Black Bread Company, which is the first ever Black-owned gourmet sliced bread company. He has served as the director of communications for Black Bread Company. In less than a year, they have been valued at $51 million. Um, so without further ado, the gentleman in front of the nice looking fireplace, that we have in the background here, Mr. Charles Alexander. Christina, thank you so much for the um, the warm welcome, um, the great introduction. Um, first and foremost, uh, this organization is awesome. Um, I'm glad to be here. I appreciate you all reaching out. Um, so as Christina said, I am Charles Alexander. Uh, I'm a double alum of SIUC, uh, love SIU. Uh, while while there, uh, again, I started out majoring in speech communication. Well, I actually started out in business marketing. Um, and then I took a speech comm class and I loved it. So I, then I switched my major to speech comm and I, started, and I minored in marketing. Um, and I found my love for just like, you know, um, public speaking and just engaging with people. Um, and then from there, uh, I went to graduate school, I majored in speech con with an emphasis in intercultural communication. Um, and so a few things I want to talk about happened along the way there is that um, I, I was involved on campus. And so those of you all that are at SIU or was at SIU this, on this call, you know the importance of being involved opens up a lot of doors and it definitely assists you with different ways on how to network. Um, so if, um, if you're familiar with um, um, public relations, Department PRSSA was an organization uh, that I was a part of. Um, I was a part of uh, Black BIB, Blacks Interested in Business. Um, also, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, uh, being part of that, um, the Beta Eta chapter, I was president and vice president over other organ um, other positions within the chapter. So yeah, I just, I just uh, learned early on, I started my sophomore year, the importance of just being involved and just meeting people and networking and just, uh, understanding various cultures. So um, fast forward to graduate school is when I really develop a passion for uh, communication overall. It started undergrad, but I'm like, this is really it. When you start reading articles and you start, you know, um, reading theory and, and putting theory to practice. And I said, this is what I need to do. Um, and so I started that, um, start, uh, graduated from the speech con program um, in 2011. Um, and from there, uh, while my, my last year, um, actually, my, when I started graduate school, I, start, I rejuvenated an organization called Black Male Roundtable, um, short for BMR. Um, and, you know, that was, that's one of my highlights, honestly, at SIU, because that, that provided an outlet and a space for young men, um, majority Black men, but all um, young men uh, at SIU to come together to speak about any 
trauma or an issue, so good or bad, that they're facing and, and having like-minded people around them to come up with solutions and, and give them their, their feedback on how to kind of navigate situations. And so I'm really proud of that. That, that was still going on for some years after I left. Um, and uh, I, I asked myself, like, when I leave here, I know I want to do something with communication, but how do I keep this, 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 this energy going of just of collaboration and dialogue with people that look like me or people don't, that don't look like me? Um, so I started an organization, a nonprofit called Speak Hope, and the Hope is an acronym for Hold Only Positive Energy. And I started that, and my goal was just to, um, if you're familiar with Chicago, um, anyone on this, um, on this Zoom call, um, I would go to the Woodlawn community, Inglewood community in Chicago, and just talk about the importance of um, building legacies in, in our communities, um, the importance of higher education, entrepreneurship, like all the things I was trying to tie into one. And so I was speaking to high schools and colleges and just different, you know, different places in Chicago and Midwest area. Um, and that would, and that continued for a while and I'm um, getting a lot of traction with that. I, I know that's something I still do periodically. Um, and from there, I started teaching communication at St. Xavier University. I um, started teaching uh, um, public speaking, intercultural communication, sports comm, and of course that, that fire for communication was ignited again. So as you can see, no matter what I did, I kept coming back to my passion. And that's why I, I want to kind of stop there for a little bit is, and just tell you all that, you know, so, sometimes you don't think your passion can be profitable um, but it really can. It's, it's just really about sticking to it, um, sticking to whatever passion, whatever gift you have. Uh, I was just thinking about the other day that God doesn't give us gifts to to hoard or he, he, he gives us gifts to give to the world, right? It's not just for you as an individual, it's to spread it back to, to, the, to the people, to the world. So um, I, I just kind of stuck with uh, what, I, what, what I love and my passion. Of course, eventually it did, it did become profitable. It eventually did become our career. Um, and then later on, uh, in um, 2020, um, I became a co-founder of the first Black-owned bread company. Um, it's called the Black Bread Company. Um, you, you can go to a website. Uh, it's called blackbreadco.com. Um, and I'm very proud of that because I, I was started on myself and two of my good friends from high school of over 20 years. Um, and so, you know, um, we, we, we figured out very quickly that there was a need um that you know there was no black owned sliced bread companies and we didn't you know put it on facebook we didn't just complain about it but we took action um and, and we launched we we kind of got together and we came up with the recipe or, uh and uh, we got our legal stuff together for an entire year of february um, 2020 um it really was sparked because of the george floyd incident uh that's kind of a little spark of everything um and really i would say just just from there we just worked and worked right? and then 2021, a year later, we launched a public in February 2021 because we wanted to commemorate Black History Month. Um, and then that month later in March, we was on the Ellen DeGeneres show. And as you can imagine, once we go on the Ellen show, things really just skyrocketed. Um, and so, you know, the rest is history. Uh, we're now in, um, uh, we're in all the Mariano's grocery stores in Chicago, at close to 60 stores. Um, overall, um, we got the Target contract for next year. We ship nationwide from our bakery to, um, to, to your home. We got a lot of other products coming. And in just a year, our company is valued at $51 million. And so I'm saying all to say is that um, collaboration and communication and sticking with what you love, um, things come together and they work out for your good. Um, so, so yeah, that's a little bit uh, just kind of about my story and kind of what, uh, what I'm up to now. Um, I am now, um, even with the Black Brick Company, uh, first as, as was stated from Christina, that my first role was director of communications, right? Makes sense. And then from there, um, I became the COO uh, over operations for the company. Now uh, I'm just kind of getting back to really what I love. And so I started kind of my own communication consulting firm um, and it'll be launching very soon. But if you all are, if you are on Instagram and social media on Instagram, uh, my name is I am Charles P. Alexander. Um, and you'll see kind of some of the things I have brewing um, because I, my, my goal, honestly, now, guys, is to take all these things I've learned over time within the realm of communication and spread it and, and give it to the world. And so um, one, one thing I want to leave you with is that um, one, one of the things that really assisted us in our success as a company within the last two years is the, uh, really the importance of following up. Um, and that's one thing I, I want to talk about a lot, even moving forward when I go different places that, you know, yeah, yes, some 
companies and organizations came to us because we're the first black owned sliced bread. So with that, of course, you'll get attention and media, all that's going to come. But the execution comes with following up. Right. And so um, I, I want to stress, like if, if it's something you're into, you want to do or somebody you're reaching out to and they're not coming and they're not getting back to you, you follow up with an email and, and you do whatever is necessary in terms of following up and in terms of reaching out to reach the outcome that you want to reach, the goal that you want to reach. Sometimes we don't follow up and because we say, well, I'm too prideful. I, I, you know, I text that person once I emailed them. They're not, reaching, they're not coming back to me. No, you, know, you got to put your price aside because. In the end, it's what you are getting out of the situation. It's not about them, it's about you, all right? And so always follow up and um, also also keep in mind the importance of uh, networking. Uh, that's another thing I'm gonna talk a lot about, the, the art of negotiation, art of negotiating. Everything is negotiable, all right? Um, so, so yes, a little bit about my story and I uh, hope you all continue to follow my journey. And I'm here to be, to assist you in any way I can. Also, uh, I guess I'll give you my email as well. It's Charles at... I am Charles P. Alexander.com. So Charles at I am Charles P. Alexander.com. All right. Thank you for your time. Awesome. Thanks, Charles. I just want to make sure I'm, I'm going to send that out to everyone. Charles at I am Charles P. Alexander.com. All right. Correct. I'll just send that to you. I need to send it to everyone. Look at me failing at moderating. <laughs> Let me please send that out to everyone. There we go. Got it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Please hang out, Charles, if you would, because we're going to have Q&A at the end. Um, and I have no doubt that we have um, questions for you. I did watch your little Ellen bit. I was telling the crew before you hopped on. So just fangirling over here because I love Ellen. So that's super awesome. Um, so yeah, appreciate it. Um, our next and last speaker is Dr. Deb uh, Barnett who earned both her doctoral and master's degrees in workforce education and development at SIU in Carbondale and holds a bachelor's degree in business admin. She proudly serves as the executive director, newly appointed executive director for Southern Illinois Now, a regional economic development hub and unified voice for the 17 Southern counties of Illinois to advance the region as a great place to live, work and do business. Prior to SI Now, uh, Dr. Barnett served in various roles over her 30-year career, including 13 years at SIU in Carbondale, which is why many of you on the call probably recognize her beautiful face. She has 10 years experience as a small business owner and roles in workforce training, elementary education, and ministry-related service. That's a diverse background there. Dr. Barnett has served on a number of teams to advance economic development and regional growth initiatives and was recently selected as the 2022 Harvard Executive Academy Fellow by the Delta Regional Authority. As a lifelong resident of, of Southern Illinois, she is passionate about contributing to the collaborative efforts to advance the region that she serves and lives in and that most of us still live in too. So I'm um, excited to hear Dr. Deb Barnett speak and I'm hopping off and, and letting you take the reins. All right, thanks Christina and hello everyone. Uh, thanks to the SIU Alumni Association and the Young Alumni Committee for this invitation to share with you this evening. Um, it's exciting to join my fellow Salukis here tonight, and I have already been so inspired uh, just listening to Charles and Eric share their experiences. So surprisingly enough, like both of them, I really am an entrepreneur at heart. And instead of climbing a career ladder like the world expects us to do sometimes, uh, my career over the past 30 years has been a bit of a winding path. Um, as Christina mentioned, I've had roles in education and business and now economic development, but I always say the one common thread has been passion. And in fact, I often refer to my career as passion to passion. So I've tried to align my work with areas that I'm really most passionate about. And those things have just happened to be in Southern Illinois, where I've spent my entire career. And of course, the SIU was a big part of that. So that's kind of what I want to share with you this evening. Um, I want to share with you that no matter what your dream is, uh, just as Charles was just saying, just as Eric was just saying, uh, seek it out, because life really is too short not to. And I'll also share that Although I've earned multiple degrees and two of them from SIU, that wasn't always the case. And people are sometimes a little bit surprised to hear this part of my story, but I actually enrolled at SIU right out of high school and uh, went 
for two years and then part way through my junior year. And I dropped out actually. I honestly was just burnt out. I had a pretty good job at the time and just decided that um, it wasn't for me. But uh, I went back to school in my late thirties really just to finish what I started. And it wasn't for career advancement at the time. It was really just a personal goal. And in fact, uh, when I worked at the university, uh, first started there in 2011, my first role there was working with other returning adults uh, that were coming back to school to pur pursue their dream of earning a college degree. And they were just like me. So many of them were just terrified. They hadn't been in school for a very long time. And many of them didn't have a lot of time. They were balancing work and family, and then they were trying to add school to the mix or maybe just thinking about it. And there was a quote that I always shared uh, with most of them that I wanted to share with you all tonight. And I have it here, so I don't know if you'll see this or if it's backwards, but basically it says, never give up on a dream just because of the time it will take to accomplish it. The time will pass anyway. And that's Earl Nightingale. And so I encourage you that no matter what your dream is tonight, no matter where you are in your career or what you're looking to pursue, I encourage you to never give up on that dream just because of the time it will take to accomplish it because the time will pass anyway. So it really is never too late. Just like I always told those students who were saying, oh gosh, I don't know if I have the time to go back to school. I don't know how I'm gonna balance it all. And I would always say, you know what? Just take one class um, because the time will pass anyway. And eventually you're going to get to your goal. But if you don't do anything, you're gonna be sitting here five years from now in the same place wondering what if. So again, never give up on a dream just because of the time it will take because the time will pass anyway. So I wanted to share a little bit about my current role. And in that role, I'm working to grow Southern Illinois, which is a place that I call home. And I think all of you probably call Southern Illinois home to some degree. If you spent any time at all in Carbondale, and it always amazes me how Carbondale and Southern Illinois have a strange way of sort of drawing us in. In fact, um, I talk with people all the time and ask how they uh, came to Southern Illinois or how they learned about Southern Illinois. And more often than not, it comes back to a connection to the university. Uh, they went to school at SIU and they either stayed or they came back to make Southern Illinois their home. And I always say it's kind of like this unexplainable vortex that just draws us back in. And interestingly enough, especially during COVID and now post COVID, we saw a lot of people uh, reprioritizing what was important in their lives. And you may be one of those as well. And we saw a lot of people valuing more quality of life over the rat race that so many of us get caught up in and as a result, we started seeing a lot of people drawn to Southern Illinois, um, to its beauty, to its low cost of living, uh, that great place to live, work, and do business, which is the motto for the work I'm doing right now uh, with Southern Illinois Now. So SI Now is a Southern Illinois growth initiative, and it focuses on the 17 southernmost counties in Illinois. And of course, SIU is right in the center of that. So we focus on business growth and development in the region. We focus on attracting new businesses to the region, also on education and workforce development. Of course, SIU is a big part of that. And then we also focus on marketing the region, both internally and externally. So others see um, those really tremendous assets and resources that we have right here in Southern Illinois. So I'm gonna kind of put out an invitation to you all tonight uh, to not only consider coming back to your alma mater to visit, whether that's for homecoming or a weekend trip or whatever that might be, but to consider what place Southern Illinois might have in your life. Um, whether it's making Southern Illinois your home, it's working for a company in Southern Illinois, and I can tell you there are a lot of companies hiring right now, including the university, um, or working remotely in Southern Illinois. We have a lot of folks doing that. Um, or maybe it's doing business in Southern Illinois, and there are a lot of opportunities. In fact, um, to Charles and Eric, 
if the black bread company or grapefruit health want to expand to Southern Illinois, we can certainly make that happen. So I'm just saying. Um, but I will say that that winding path, that passion to passion career has not only kept me in Southern Illinois, but it has led me to this role in which I get to share Southern Illinois and my love for the region to help others discover it too. And so I'm gonna end by saying that, again, none of this would have been possible without SIU. Not only is SIU a strong partner in SI Now, uh, but in fact, the whole initiative started out of a conversation at SIU uh, in 2018 when Chancellor Montemagno at the time had a vision to strengthen the connection between SIU and Southern Illinois, and as a result, to uh, strengthen both. And some of you might know that unfortunately, shortly after that time, he had a devastating cancer diagnosis that cut his life short. Um, but the group he had put together, they have carried on that work. And the vision now four years later has become a reality that we know as SI Now. So I will close with that. And I encourage you to ask yourself, what is your vision? And Charles alluded to that as well. What is your dream? And how can you take steps to make that happen um, one step at a time? And Again, as I told so many students during my time at SIU, um, never give up on a dream just because of the time it will take to accomplish it because the time will pass anyway. So again, I just wanna thank the Alumni Association, the Young Alumni Committee for bringing us together this evening. I will put my contact information in the chat and I encourage you to connect and I can't end without saying go Salukis. Thanks, Dr. Deb. Appreciate it. Thank you for hopping on. Um, I took two big pieces away from um, basically the, the last 20 minutes, and it is find your passion and follow it. And don't be afraid to follow your passion and make it profitable. You can do what you enjoy. Absolutely. So thank you both for hopping on. And now we're going to um, turn to a couple questions that had chatted in. So for anyone who wasn't on earlier, if you want to uh, chat anonymously <laughs> and have your questions asked, you can ask, like, um, actually chat them to someone whom we have renamed Ask Questions Here, which is Bethany, that's gonna hop on here in just a second. And then after she asks any questions that have been chatted to her, um, we're gonna give you all the opportunity to hop on video or just audio, whatever you wanna do, um, and communicate directly with our um, presenters. So we are super excited about that. I will note we lost Eric. Don't know what happened, but he is not on anymore. So if we do have any questions that y'all would like to ask Eric, please don't hesitate to chat it in. Um, over to Bethany, and we will definitely make sure that we reach out to him um, and get those questions asked for you. So not sure what happened there, but I just wanted to give everyone a heads up on that. So I am going to pass it over to Bethany. Ask questions here. <laughs> Thank you both. This was a really great talk, and I learned a lot starting to think about different ways I can get active and just different avenues that I can you know, take my next step. So I enjoyed both of you. Um, talk. So our first question from our audience is, any advice on what types of organizations or groups to become involved with? It sounds like that was an important part for um, both of you. Who wants to go first? We'll let Charles jump on first. Uh, okay. Are you saying currently at SIU organizations there or? Um, I think it's in general. It can be at SIU, but since it's hmm. also, and just in case we have any students, it can be at SIU, but yeah, professionally yeah. Okay. as well. Okay. So I mentioned PRSSA, which is Public Relations Student Society of America. I haven't said it in a long time. Um, but I, that was, you know, I was, again, I was in the speech communication department. So that was the um, organization that was connected to the majors in the department. So that was, a, that was probably one of the first, one of the first or second organizations I became a part of. And I think that's important because I think being a young major and just going to class, to me, that's just not enough, right? Because everyone else is doing that, that's in that major. Like what's gonna make you stand out, right? What's gonna make them remember your name, right? When it's, um, when it's close to graduation, well, when it's time for recommendation letters, et cetera, right? And so um, it's important for you to be vocal 
right, to um, to be involved, to share, share your leadership skills. So one, again, find an organization that's attached to what you want to do in the future, your major. And another thing is, like, um, networking is, is such a, um, um, not vague term, but it's something we just always talk about. But nobody really breaks down what it truly means to network, right? Like, what does that look like? Is it just you just go in a room with people and you just start talking to them? Like, is that is that the it, does that accomplish your goal? And so, I would say if you're involved involved in any organization and, and you want to network, I call it net building. So, like networking while building, like you're doing both together. Because in order to effectively network, you have to build with those people, right? And so, one, go with a plan, right? So, whatever you're going to be involved in, whatever organization you want to be involved in, go with a plan, right? Research what it's about, right? Have the questions ready so wherever you go, right, you know, you're not randomly trying to figure things out. Yeah, you, you, this is what I want to do. And people know that you're clear about your, your, your path and your goals. So, I, I, I just want to leave with just saying, like, be focused on what you want to do. Um, if there is an organization in your city, right, or just attached to your job or your major, just like follow that, go, get into it. And then from there, I think, figure out more things to get involved in. And I would add, I think it depends, this answer depends a little bit on whether the person asking the question is still um, in college or if they've graduated. But um, if they're still in college, I would encourage internships, certainly the RSOs that Charles mentioned and others, there's always something to get involved with on campus. And I would highly encourage that. Um, but internships, going in and actually experiencing um, the workplace or the career that you think you want to enter into, it's not only great for experiences, but it's great in that um, networking and net building, as Charles mentioned and really starting to build those strong connections. So I encourage that. Um, certainly the uh, Chambers of Commerce where you're at, uh, certainly Carbondale Chamber of Commerce. Christina, I don't know if they still have a, a young, uh, I can't remember what they called that, but they, there's a group where they, they help young people come in um, to that chamber. So whether you're a business owner or not, check those, those out, business Business owners and, and business people in your community are always great connections. And then finally, um, as Charles mentioned, volunteering, you know, giving back, whether you're in college or you've started your career, making sure that you give back to your community, I think is one of the best ways um, to get involved and, and not only be part of your community, but make those connections and, and um, dive into those areas you're really passionate about. Yes, and I'm not a presenter here, but I will piggyback off of Deb. So the, the our Chamber of Commerce and most Chambers of Commerce have um, what is a young professionals group um, that is built specifically around helping the young professionals in that community um, network, net build, um, have access to resources that can help them grow professionally. So yes. All right, what else we got, Bethany? Our next question is directed to Charles and what resource did you lean on the most in the early days of business plan development with the Black Bread Company? Well, that's an exceptional question. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, um, women, you don't know, but I'll tell you, um, we didn't have many resources, right? Um, we didn't have many resources at all. Uh, again, when you're the first to something, like a, a lot of things are just trial and error. Like you figure out as you go. Um, and so, you know, we didn't know anybody in a bread company, right? How we know somebody that makes bread, right? Um, we, we, then we also found out quickly that um, the sliced bread industry started in the early 1920s. So it took 100 years for Black people and minorities in general to be a part of this, you know, $441 billion business. Um, uh, so, you know, we, 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 we lean on each other, right? There's three of us. Uh, we know our, each other's skill sets, our strengths and weaknesses. So we, we use each other a lot. And we, we always say our fourth partner was Google. We did, we did a lot of Googling. Um, and, and also keep in mind, like, this, the, 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 the idea came during the pandemic. It's 2020, right? And so and we, all of our meetings was on Zoom like we are now, right? Meeting, meeting, you know, hours and hours, action planning. And that was a big part, like, we, we didn't come just to talk. We came with action steps. Like, all right, Charles, you have a communication. Like, what, what do we need to do for that? You know, Mark, you have a sales. You know, you over marketing. So we came with 
our action items like already re ready to discuss we're doing every meeting right and so we just you know we just really got to business and i think with that you know eventually you know when, when we did launch to the public people was like oh what is this about you know our product was like we want to make sure our product was top top tier so of course we had to google like you know you know companies that made you know uh, packaging like um, CPG or uh, like consumer packaged goods. Like how, to, like even that process, we knew nothing about that. So who made packaging? Like find a manufacturer and, you know, chef to come up with the recipe, you know, for, for, for our bread. And, and, and so all these things we just knew like had to happen. We had to figure out who could do it though because we didn't have those skill sets. And so I guess the word for that is being resourceful, right? We might not have the resources, but we were resourceful. Um, so we found those people that could assist with us. Again, some were good, some were bad, um, but we just kept pushing forward. And I think that's another part with business, with your career, whatever it is, you know, challenges will, will continue to come. But through it all, we got to you just got to continue to push forward and persist through it all, right? And um, and the sunshine will, will will come right after the rain. Uh, the, the the sun will the sun will come out. So. Thanks, Charles. And, and I'll pivot. Uh, I know that was uh, directed directly at Charles. Um, but Deb, could you chime in a little bit on um, on top of being resourceful? It, maybe in, in our community, I know it directly who, who you would send them to, but I'm sure there are resources in, in any community that they're going to be in um, that they could look to for, for help um, when they're starting from the ground up, something like that. Yeah, of course. And I'm so inspired, Charles, by your story. And um, I just, the role that I was in right before I came to Southern Illinois now was at SIU's business incubator. And uh, I wish I would have known you then. And, and certainly we can still get you plugged in even now because um, there, there are folks that need mentors and people like you, um, just like you found those people in your life when you were, were getting started. And um, so, Christina, to answer your question, there are, uh, in, at, S at SIU, in addition to the business incubator, there is a small business development center, and that is funded through the Small Business Administration. So they are all across the country. Uh, there should be one near you in your community. You can just Google small business development center, and there should be a map or a drop down where you can see uh, which one is, is uh, closest. And all of those services, excuse me, are offered at no cost. So as a result of the Small Business Administration and their support and then other uh, local support, in our case, SIU and uh, the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity, uh, those services are available to e everyone at no cost. And they can help with those early, early items of someone just having an idea and not even knowing if, if it's a viable idea to helping with business planning, financial projections, all of those types of things. So uh, that's definitely a resource folks can tap into. Can, can I quickly add to that, Christina? Um, so you mentioned, um, Deb, you mentioned the small business incubator. So um, during undergrad, uh, my roommate and I came with an idea, like, you know, we noticed that it was a lack of clothing stores like in Carbondale. And so uh, we was like, you know, we should see if we could start a clothing, clothing company, uh, uh, open up a clothing store. Um, and the goal was to have it right across the street from the towers. Um, it was like a little shopping mart right there. I think it was where Don Taco used to be actually, like in, in that shopping shopping mart. Um, and so, you know, we had a whole plan, but of course we had no um, history or no, 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 no experience in creating business plans. So someone told us about the small business incubator. We went there, told them our plan. When I tell you, they created like this, like just super nice business plan. Again, they have with their financial projections. Um, and it was it was awesome. Like we reached out to all the manufacturers in St. Louis and we had a great plan, but guess what? We had no money and uh, we had no collateral. So every bank turned us down. What, end of story. But I just wanted to say uh, <laughs> the small business incubator is great. Perfect. Thanks for the testimony there. <laughs> Bethany, do we have any more that we had chatted into yet? We have two more questions. Perfect. Um, the first is, what has been the most challenging obstacles in your journey towards success? And let's start with Deb, and then we'll move to you, Charles. Wow, that's a great question. What has been the most challenging 
obstacle. Boy, I really have to think about that one because I am, you know, because I've kind of followed this passion to passion is what I call it. Um, I consider myself a builder. So I'm not one to kind of just settle in and then uh, build something up and then just have the ease of maintaining it, right? I'm, I'm this entrepreneur at heart, so I'm always building something and starting something new. Um, so I would say that's not really an obstacle, but it definitely is a challenge. And it's a challenge that I readily accept, but I can be honest in saying that it's both exciting and terrifying at the same time. And so, um, I, again, I wouldn't see that as an obstacle, but it definitely is a challenge um, that kind of keeps me going, actually. I, I am always up for a challenge and certainly have experienced uh, those. I think with other folks that I have worked with over the years, um, just as Charles mentioned, you know, we saw a lot of people come with ideas and for whatever reason, the resources wasn't, weren't there or, or there just wasn't a way to move those things forward. And so those certainly, certainly are obstacles. Um, but I will also add that just as I shared in my story, you know, dropping out of college early on and not finishing my degree that actually was an obstacle for a lot of years, because even though I owned a, a couple of businesses, um, if I did want to apply for a job during those times, I had a lot to bring to the table, but I didn't have that piece of paper that said that I had a college degree. And so that was an obstacle that closed a lot of doors or would have closed a lot of doors for me. Um, so, you know, that's one of the reasons I went back and, and to earn my degree again, just to uh, finish what I started, but also to kind of take away that that obstacle for me. So, Charles. Yeah, I would just add that um, entrepreneurship in itself is 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 not easy. You know, it's 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 glamorized um, on social media, um, but it's 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 really not easy at all, right? Like you really have to put in. Um, we have to really have to put in the work. And it's, you know, we, um, I think um, someone else um, asked a question. Can you all hear me? I think my AirPod went out. Okay. Um, someone asked a question about, you know, transition from full time job to business owner. So that's my challenge, literally right there. It was like, all I knew in my mind was like nine to five, right? I had, I had a schedule, I had a routine and that's just really what it was like teaching communication. Like that's what it was like in an educational an education field. And so my aha moment was literally like the demand for the product. It's like, you know, do we, do I have, you know what over here or do I give it my all and see what will happen? And so, you know, another thing with entrepreneurship is not talked about enough is that you need a support system. Right. Thank God for my wife. Right. Thank God for her saying, you know what, you know, you know, when the money was not coming in like it, like we was accustomed to when I had a nine to five. Right. And she was like willing to step up and do what's necessary because she believed in in our dream. Right. And so having a support system or a partner to someone is that, that believes in you and trusts in your dream is it, I think that really assists um, entrepreneurs and gets that next level because. If you have a family, you have all these things going on, and you quit your nine to five. You know, nine to five is literally like if you don't, if the, if the, your product don't sell, like you don't eat, right? You don't make money, right? Because that two week cushion of that two week check every every you know every few weeks isn't coming. Um, and so I think for me it was like just that transition of being okay with not, you know, having that cushion with the nine to five um, and that every check every two weeks and just truly believing in, in, in what we have here and but also just staying persistent it's easy to give up it really is like it's easy to say oh I can just go back to what I know to do right I have you know experience in this I just go right back into, into doing this and, and be comfortable with me and be okay right but it's like I have to persist right and and also fear right uh, I've been telling myself lately like a fear cannot live here anymore. I'm, I'm not going to allow fear in anything, any any aspect of my life to take over what I want to do, whether it's career, whether it's family, whether it's social, whatever it is. Um, um, just 
no, fear can't live here. Just keep moving forward, being persistent. It's not going to be easy. You're going to make mistakes, right? Everything, it won't be peaches and cream. But the goal is just how do I continue on my path, even while challenges are coming my way? Um, so for me, again, it was like uh, uh, um, eradicating fear and pushing through with, per, uh, with persistence. Awesome. Thank you both. I think we had one more. There's Bethany. I was like, uh-oh, Bethany's gone. Okay. Bethany's back. We got one more here. Well, actually, I think that y'all answered that last one. Um, the last question that we had in both of y'all's last answers. So I, Christina, I think we can go ahead and wrap up. Awesome. That was a fantastic question. Thank you, Rita, uh, for chatting that, that question in. That's a fantastic way to end the in the show too, I think. So so thank you, Rita, for, for chatting that in. Um, if anyone wants to, um, we have a few minutes. If anyone wants to pop in on video or on audio and converse directly um, with Charles or Deb, I think we did um, exhaust all the questions that came in. So I'm gonna pause for an awkward silence to see if anyone wants to, to hop on. Come on in, y'all, come on in. This is the best part. Shout out to Salukis, my people. Cora, I'm going to call you out. Cora, turn your audio on. Hey, I also have Sean with me, too. <laughs> <laughs> so um, a little bit of background. So Cora uh, is obviously an SIU grad um, whose first job out of college was with the one and only Christina Pisoni. So she uh, she worked for me for a little bit and has moved on to, to bigger and better. And I believe has just gotten into a little bit of her own um startup or uh you know self-employed scenario so i know you one of you or sean has a question for one of these individuals so i'm putting you on the spot to ask one well you you did put me on the spot just a bit i did have my questions that i had earlier answered by some of your questions that were brought up already but wanted to throw in both of you guys were very inspiring with what you spoke about it's really nice to see you know kind of a timeline of you know how things have progressed post college you know i'm only a couple of years out now and sean just graduated in 2020 so we're very fresh right off the market. So we've got a lot to learn along the way, um, but I'm really excited to, you know, continue on and continue to grow. And, and one thing that's really exciting for us too, is I've learned to want to further educate myself in, you know, a lot of areas outside of college too, like maybe exploring, um, and Christina mentioned maybe like a coaching certificate to help, you know, further educate other people and inspire other people too. So very exciting. I've learned a lot listening to you guys. So I really appreciate it. There we go. Thanks. Thanks, Cora. Okay. Mark, I think has his hand up. Mark, jump on for us. Hello. You hey, hear me real? All right. All right. Yes. No. Uh, so I also had a whole bunch of questions that were answered uh, at the very last minute. So um, I did want to take the opportunity again to thank, well, just as well to, to thank everybody for coming in. Uh, did think of one question, though, um, that uh, did not get answered in some ways. Um, you know, talking about like the business mentors, uh, that was a great uh, answer, uh, Deb. I appreciate that. Um, but, uh, you know, some of the resources and, and business mentors, and again, like the, that was also mentioned by Charles in social media, there's tons of presence there. Um, Right now, I mean, for me personally, I'm sure others that don't have a uh, someone to lean on with with professional experience, business experience, entrepreneurial experience. Um, you know, I'm looking to to branch out to trying to find some kind of mentor or something like that. Um, but what I get worried about is uh, malicious uh, type of uh, uh, businesses that are out there uh, to take advantage uh, or uh, otherwise are just ultimately useless. Um, did is there anything that uh, now since it's uh, uh, Charles and Deb, is there anything that maybe you come across um, that from your experience that was maybe not so much a waste of time or maybe did, uh, you know, you felt like was uh, not necessarily didn't really bring you forward, uh, it, but but something that you, you found that we should maybe avoid. So. Yeah, I, I guess I can start that. Um, Mark, you, you're right in terms of, you know, there are organizations or people that are not, that does not have your best interest at heart, right? You know, in terms of maybe are scamming or just like, just not who they say they are. Um, and so for us, or for me, you know, 
um, mentorship came through connecting with people, right? Through being at different um, different events and different places, and you know, be, meeting people on business calls and 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 really saying like, you know, wow, this is you're very experienced in this field. Would you mind, you know, uh, if I, you know you know, reached out to you once or twice a month just to pick your brain. You know, it, it's, 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 it's interesting because all of us are always seeking more information, more knowledge as human beings, right? But we, we hesitate a lot to reach out to those people that we know could actually assist us, you know, because of, you know, it could be pride or just like you don't want them to, you know, think you want too much for them or you want them to say no, right? Um, so it's a fear of reject rejection as well. And so, but, you know, we have to get out of our comfort zones when we when we try to get something for ourselves. Like in order to be a go-getter, like you can't be quiet, right? You have to, you know, voice what you need and engage with people. And so, yeah, so for me, it was just like, you know, I, I always say, you know, when you're trying to create something or you're trying to build something, you have a tool, tool set, a toolkit, right? What do you do? You take what you need, right? And then you leave the rest. And I think that's what any conversation, anywhere you, any, any, anybody you talk to, anything you do, it's like, take what you need, right? And you leave the rest. Right? Because at that, at that moment, you just might not need that. And that's what any conversation, anybody you talk to, they might not end up being a mentor, but you can get nuggets from them that can help you and assist you to get to that next level. So I would say, you know, um, and, and I think YouTube is also helpful. Sometimes you can just Google and find out information. YouTube University, right? It's, that's a real thing. Like literally you can find information on your own and weed out what you need. Right. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's what I said. I, I don't have a specific place just to go for mentorship. For me, it's just been like, you know, hidden myths, an array of different people that I just kind of has been saying, can I pick your brain? Can I ask you questions? Are you open to that? And take it from there. I would agree with Thank that. Thank you for that. Yeah, Mark, I would also go back to what I said earlier about just um, giving back to your community and volunteering. A lot of times the folks that you meet in some of those organizations or opportunities, um, those are people of pretty high character. And uh, there's a reason they're giving back to their community and they're, they're so involved. So I, I would encourage you to look for areas like that to meet uh, mentors. And then also really just getting to know them, asking them questions and, and getting to know a little bit about their life. And I think you'll quickly find which ones are gonna be a, a good fit for you and which ones maybe you don't um, click with as well. Um, and then as Charles said, just asking for their advice. Everyone loves to give advice, you know, uh, unsolicited or otherwise. <laughs> so um, just asking for their advice about, about different things that they've experienced uh, over the course of time in their life and career, I think would be really valuable. Awesome. Thank you so much. No, I appreciate that. All right. Thank you, uh, Mark, for hopping on and, and asking a question. And that was um, a fantastic a question to ask both of those individuals. So I think um, with that, we will uh, wrap it up. We did record this, so we do plan on sharing it in our in our SIU Young Alum Facebook group. Um, and for those that, that may be on this call that are not in that group, um, we do have a Facebook um, group, I just said group 5,000 times, that um, we use to communicate uh, future events. So this is the second in our Saluki's Elevate series, and we do plan on continuing them and doing them twice a year um, virtually so that folks from all over the US or the world really could hop on with us. Um, and every time our goal is set to have it on a, a specific topic. Um, and this was a, a fantastic, you know, about an hour of, of information um, passed along. So if you have not already, I do um, urge you to go ahead and join that group. It's just SIU Young Alumni Group. You can search it on Facebook. Um, we do traditionally have a, an in-person um, event in the spring for those who are around the Southern Illinois area. It's kind of like a golf um, 101 event. We did it for the first time last year and we had a couple of, um, actually a, a former golf coach and a former golf um, a student athlete come out and just give some easy one uh, one on one golf tips on uh, if you're a little nervous on on your golf game and, and joining uh, any scrambles that may happen kind of walking you through um, the the ins and outs and how to be more comfortable, um, which is a great way to network, um, by the way so if you are local be on the lookout for that and then if not we, we will have another elevate series coming up so I do ask that you join the Facebook group. 
We will also send a post event survey um, just to kind of see how we did, see if you have any suggestions on further topics um, or anything we could um, do better to better connect with our, our um, young alums in the future. Um, I think that was all of my housekeeping. Uh, thank you, Dr. Deb. Thank you, Charles. Um, and thanks to Eric. Um, we, we really appreciate it. Um, thanks for having me. A, a I appreciate it. Absolutely. And I, I wish you both um, the best of luck in, in, I guess, both of your new positions since Dr. Deb just transitioned over. Um, and Charles, um, we hope to, to only see you grow. So thank you both for hopping on. Um, and with that, everyone have a great evening. All right. You too. Thanks, everyone.